In this video, we will learn 12 different ECG rhythms which are essential for all medical students and professionals in day-to-day -day work life. And we are gonna learn these 12 ECG rhythms in this manner. Let's start with our first TCG, normal sinus rhythm. A normal sinus rhythm has five waves, P, Q, R, S, and T. There are regular P waves, which are followed by regular QRS complexes and regular RR interval. The PR intervals should be between 120 to 200 milliseconds or 3 to 5 small squares. And QRS complex should be less than 110 milliseconds or less than 3 small squares. And in normal sinus rhythm, heart rate is between 60 to 100 beats per minute. ECG number 2. Sinus bradycardia. Sinus bradycardia follows all the criteria of normal sinus rhythm, like regular P waves, followed by regular QRS complexes and regular RR intervals. Plus the PR intervals and QRS complexes do not exceed the normal length limits. But in sinus bradycardia, the heart rate is below 60 beats per minute, which is the only factor that differentiates sinus bradycardia from normal sinus rhythm. ECG number 3. Sinus tachycardia. Just like sinus bradycardia, sinus tachycardia also follows all the criteria of the normal sinus rhythm, like regular P waves, followed by regular QRS complexes and regular RR intervals. Also the PR intervals and QRS complexes do not go below the normal length limits. But in sinus tachycardia, the heart rate is above 100 beats per minute which is the only factor that differentiates sinus tachycardia from normal sinus rhythm and sinus bradycardia. ECG number 4. Atrial fibrillation. This is the ECG of atrial fibrillation. It is the most common type of cardiac arrhythmia. Before learning ECG, let's learn the physiology behind it. The heart has four chambers. The upper two chambers are called datria, and the lower two chambers are called ventricles. And to generate a heartbeat, the sinus node in the right atrium sends out electrical impulses in the ventricles. But in atrial fibrillation, the other areas of the atrium also send out the multiple electrical impulses. These irregular impulses force atria to twitch, which we can see in ECG. There is no clear P wave or absent P wave due to the atrial twitching. And the RR intervals are irregularly irregular due to the multiple irregular impulses from the atria. There are also narrow QRS complexes, which is lower than 80 milliseconds in atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation with more than 100 beats per minute call atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response, and less than 60 beats per minute call atrial fibrillation with slow ventricular response. ECG number 5. Atrial flutter. We will learn the ECG of atrial flutter, but before that, let's learn what is atrial flutter. A normal heartbeat begins when the ASA node fires electrical impulse. This causes atria to contract, which forces blood into ventricles. When the electrical impulse reaches the AV node, it pauses before moving into ventricles. This makes ventricles to contract, which forces blood out of heart and circulates it around the body. But in atrial flutter, the electrical impulses circulate much faster than normal around the atria. This causes atria to contract much faster, up to 300 times a minute. To control the heart rate, the AV node blocks some of these electrical impulses, which causes atria and ventricles to contract at different speeds, resulting in this type of ECG. So in atrial flutter, there is no P wave, but a show tooth pattern is seen which is due to the repeated circulation of electrical impulses in atria. And the RR intervals are regular, and the QRS complexes are narrow, which is less than 80 milliseconds. ECG number 6, TVC, or premature ventricular contractions. Premature ventricular contractions are a very common cardiac condition, and it is usually harmless. It happens when electrical impulses generate from ectopic sites in ventricles earlier than usual. And the size and shape of the ECG wave depends upon the ectopic site. In ECG, there is a broad QRS complex, 
with an absent P wave due to early depolarization of ventricles. When there is PVC after every single regular beat, it is called bigeminy. And when there is a PVC after every two regular beats, it is called trigeminy. ECG number 7. AV block or heart block. AV block has three types. First degree heart block, second degree heart block, and third degree heart block or complete heart block. In the first degree heart block, the ECG looks just like a normal sinus rhythm. It has regular P waves, followed by regular QRS complexes. But the PR intervals are quite longer than usual. The first degree heart block is usually harmless and not much of a concern. The second degree heart block has a further two types. Mobitz type 1 and Mobitz type 2. In Mobitz type 1 block, the PR intervals gradually increase and then skips a heartbeat. If it is happening after every three beats, then it will happen after every three beats. And if it is happening after every two beats, then it will happen after every two beats or for for four or five for five. So it is called regularly irregular rhythm. Well, in Mobitz type to block, the PR intervals do not gradually increase and there is sudden skip of beat, which is unpredictable. It doesn't follow the same pattern as the Mobitz type 1 block. So Mobitz type 2 is an irregularly irregular rhythm, and it is highly likely to convert into a complete heart block. The third degree heart block is also called a complete heart block. In CHP, P wave is not regular, and QRS complex does not follow P wave. There is no relation between P wave and QRS complex, and sometimes they appear at the same time and form a junction rhythm. And CHP usually has a heart rate below 40 beats per minute. ECG number 8. Bundle branch block. There are two types of bundle branch block. Left bundle branch block and right bundle branch block. Let's learn these both together. In both left and right bundle branch blocks, the QRS complexes are wider with duration more than 120 milliseconds. In the left bundle branch block, there is a deep S wave in lidv1 and prolonged R wave in lidv6, making a W pattern in lidv1 and an M pattern in lidv6. While in the right bundle branch block, there is an RSR pattern in lidv1 and prolonged S wave in lidv6, which makes an M pattern in lidv1 and a W pattern in lidv6. To remember this easily, we can use numerical, William, and Marrow. When there is SD changes with the bundle branch block, it is very difficult to figure out, and it has certain other criteria to follow. ECG number 9. One of the most famous ECG abnormality. The SD elevation myocardial infarction. SD elevation myocardial infarction is the ECG of heart attack. In this ECG, the SD segment is elevated from its baseline. The SD elevation myocardial infarction has further five types. Anterior wall SD elevation myocardial infarction, inferior wall SD elevation myocardial infarction, lateral wall SD elevation myocardial infarction, posterior wall SD elevation myocardial infarction, and right ventricular SD elevation myocardial infarction. We need 12 lids ECG to evaluate these ECG and to learn which lid to look for particular ST elevation myocardial infarction. Lead V2 to V6 for anterior wall ST elevation myocardial infarction. Lead 2, 3, and AVF for inferior wall ST elevation myocardial infarction. Lead 1, AVL, V5, and V6 for lateral wall ST elevation myocardial infarction. ST depression in lead V2, V3, V4. And V5 for posterior wall SD elevation myocardial infarction. Lead AVR and lead V1 for right ventricular SD elevation myocardial infarction. ECG number 10. SVT, supraventricular tachycardia. In supraventricular tachycardia, heart rate is above or around 150 beats per minute. There is no P wave present in supraventricular tachycardia. And the RR intervals are regular. And the QRS complex is narrow, below 80 milliseconds. ECG number 11. 
Ventricular tachycardia. Ventricular tachycardia has a further two types, monomorphic VT and polymorphic VT. Monomorphic VT looks like this. It has no clear P wave, and the QRS complex is wider, more than 120 milliseconds. And every beat looks like the same. While in polymorphic VT, there is clear cut variation in every beat. And the most common example of polymorphic VT is torsades to points. And ECG number 12. One of the most lethal ECG abnormality. Ventricular fibrillation. Ventricular fibrillation, or VFIT, is a chaotic, unorganized rapid rhythm. There is no P wave, or QRS complex, or T wave present in VFIT. Ventricular fibrillation and ventricular tachycardia are both shockable rhythms and need DC cardioversion. If not done so, it will lead into cardiac arrest, followed by asystole. A flatline knee CG, suggestive of no cardiac activity. This means the end of life. And this is the end of this video.